here with me is actor and film director Gary Pastore, who has been acting in about 50, or has been about 50 roles in a 30-year career. Is that correct, uh, Gary? It's probably now more like 60 and uh, 35 60. years. 60, okay, 60 roles in a career of spanning 35 years. And uh, a couple of years ago, you were the director of an actor of the film Distressed, uh, which will be shortly on realhouse.org, available for us Europeans and in America um, also. The, so uh, the topic of stress, that was then something very, was it something very personal to you uh, that you got interested into that or was it something professional? No, it's, it's personal. Personal. Person. Okay, so how did you get, how, uh, what was that for you? Could you give us a little bit more explanation of what, what had gone on in your life? What happens is, I'm sure you've heard of the American dream that everybody wants to have the house and the white picket fence and the family. And at, as I was approaching 40 years old, I decided I didn't want to be single anymore. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to be married and have kids and be, have somewhat of a, a normal life. And um, but what comes along with that uh, is a lot of responsibility. And, you know, I, I bought a home. I got married. I did it really quick, too. I got married. Um, I bought a home. I had children. What led up to the events was September 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, it really was a punch in the gut because of... The fact that I saw how sh how life is so precious, and that it could, you know, go just like that, and I I think that that's really what uh, gave me more more of a, a furor to go out and settle down and uh, have a family. Mm -hmm. You know, not taking into account that now I'm going to take on other expenses and and bills and things of that nature. So I, I realized after making this movie that stress is a manufactured uh, product. We manufacture mm -hmm. it most of the time. We kind of do it to ourselves. You know, and that being said, um, I say it in the film, it's how you handle it. And, um, you know, obviously there's some types of stress that you have no control over, which is going to happen. But I'd say on any given day, a human being is probably mostly responsible for the stress that they endure. Mm -hmm. um, I say it in the movie, it starts when your alarm clock goes off. If you hit the snooze alarm three times, you're now a half hour late. Yes. So you're going to rush. And right there, as soon as you put your foot out of that bed, you're starting off in a negative. It's yes. not a positive situation. It's a negative situation. Because how are you going to gain that half hour back that you need to commute, get into work on time? And everything that follows up from that um, is something that you created. You did it. You're it. See, if I leave my house a half hour late in the morning, I'm going to hit an, an incredible amount of traffic. That one half hour creates a world of uh, a nightmare for me, for the commute. And now I'm taking that negative commuting and energy, and I'm going to have to hold that all day long inside just from my touching that snooze alarm three times. So it's not about the snooze alarm. It's about the mindset that the person, me, created the situation of the stressful event because of it. 
So if that makes sense to you, um, you know, and, and you know, you, you, this road rage that follows it and, and then you go in and somebody says something snarky at work and then you wind up in an argument with one of your, uh, your coworkers. Or, for nothing, for a small, for you know, for, for a small for thing at the end, yeah. It's because your day is stressed out. Now, add that to a Monday morning and the rain and throw mm -hmm. all kinds of other stuff on there and the president's in town. I mean, this week was a UN assembly in yes. New York City. It's, it's frightful. It's one of those things you just don't want to be, um, you know, in town for. And unfortunately, last week I was in the city five out of five days and uh, traffic was horrific. It took me an average of three hours to get home every night after working all day. So, wow. yeah. Am I going to be stressed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. And then, unfortunately, you're taking that stress into your home. So, and who's going to be the recipient of the stress? Um, your family. Yes. Your wife, your children, or anybody else you encounter. I think we as humans need to think more. I think we need to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Um, be happy with what you have and not what you don't have. You know, this whole situation here with um, politics, I've never seen anything like this in my, my years. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but we do vote and we bring in whoever we bring in. And I, I think that for all the people that dislike the president, he's not a president. You're going to have to deal with it. You know, I, I think that constantly going on about it and creating fires and riots and I, I don't think that that's a solution i yeah. think that that's creating a very stressful environment for the whole country yeah. um you know but it's I, like I, like you were saying also in in before it's like you know that the way you look at things you know just your mindset of uh that creates the stress yeah and also with uh in in your film you also mentioned for example you know when you have you, you have a job and you then you're going to get credit, you know, and you have a bank loan, which is then, uh, you know, which is probably a little bit too, mu too much more than you really can afford. So you're putting some more stress on you. Yes. And then you have these factors you can control. Then you have factors which you can't control, which, for example, you know, the election of a president or the, the traffic itself that creates because you have this uh, huge uh, UN gathering in New York while yeah while your work is in New York, uh, we have that sometimes as well in Brussels when you know when all the Europeans come together when all you know when when Trump came uh, to Brussels you know that was the day that you definitely didn't take your car into into Brussels itself. So these are the the things that add up and if you if you have a you know, what, what's called life change units, you know, life changes or, you know, all these uh, stressors, it adds up at the end, you know, one day it's okay, but if it's on a continuous basis, yes, that has a big, big impact. And for you, unfortunately, you ended up in hospital, you know, with a stress-related uh, heart disease or, uh, you know, like a stroke. No, it wasn't or was it it was intestinal. Um, okay. What happens when we get when we get upset about anything? Mm -hmm. Our our fight or flight system takes over in our bodies, mm -hmm. and one of the organs that seems to deal with stress the most is our um, digestive system. Mm -hmm. uh, you've heard of people getting ulcers and yes, colitis yes. and Crohn's and diverticulitis. A lot of it. It's because your insides secrete more acid and what it does is it makes it inflamed or irritated. So when you're stressed out or you're going through a stressful period, your, um, your insides become engorged mm -hmm. and they become swollen. And when it's swollen down there, a lot of times you're not digesting your foods right or it's just not passing through right. 
And uh, one of the uh, things I had was diverticulitis where my, my, uh, my colon actually became inflamed and food was not able to pass through. Um, okay. And it got severe and it almost became perforated. In fact, I did start to get septus. I had to go into the hospital immediately and get uh, major amounts of antibiotics just to control the infection. Yeah, it could have taken my life. I mean, of course, then there's the heart. You know, you're stressed out. You got yeah. a heart attack. If you have a bad heart, I, I happen to have a good heart, thank God. Um, but yeah, you know, going through that kind of um, a medical uh, emergency definitely makes you look out at things and how your life has been and saying, you know, wow. You know, this, this, this is close. Mm. I have to do things to combat this, and I don't know what to do because life doesn't change really. I mean, once you've painted yourself into that corner, how do you unpaint it? You know, uh, you buy the house and you put yourself into a position where you have to make X amount of dollars per week in order to afford your, your living. And I think especially Americans, uh, I don't know so much in Europe, but especially Americans, they always overdo things. They always seem to overspend, overbuy. There's a saying they call it keeping up with the Joneses where you, mm-hmm. you're trying to compete with the next one. That's not me, but a lot of people do that. You know, they have to have the fanciest car in their neighborhood. You know, I can't afford it. So you buy this vehicle, you can't afford it. The stress, you know. Um, that's what I say. We, we we create a lot of it ourselves. So how would you would you give an ex, would you know how to get out of that? Is there any tips you can give? You know, you're in that situation that you know you you've you've gone too far, you've got too much debt or whatever it is to you know to recalibrate yourself. Is there anything you can from your personal experience maybe say from how do you step back into it and I got then rid of, say I got from, rid of my credit cards? No credit cards. Okay. They're gone. I don't use credit. I use a debit card. If the money's in the bank, I'll spend it. If it's not, I don't. That has that has done an incredible, incredible amount of relief in my life. Um, yeah, I, I've pretty much shaved my debt in half, um, and I I don't have that pressure anymore. You know, I if I don't work a few days. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Whereas back when I was, uh, you know, um, I'd say in the beginning, I couldn't miss a day. You know, and, and if you think about it, that's kind of sad that you can't afford to take a day off. You can't go on a trip. You can't do anything. You just have to go to work constantly to to support your your nut. You know, and, and I'm the sole <laughs> breadwinner here. You know, I I okay. paid the bill. The whole, my whole time, my wife was a stay-at-home mom. So, yeah. and I'm fine with that because I wanted somebody to raise my kids from within. I don't want a nanny. I don't want an old pair. I wanted my children to be raised by uh, either myself or my wife, and obviously it was my wife. So, I, again, I took that responsibility on. Then it's big, you know. Yeah. And that is like that. Just it. You're going to be. You know, you have to work more than you can't be with your kids. That gives you stress. And, you know, so, you know, once, you know, you have to start realizing that and say from, hey, you know, what am I working for you know, uh, to pay off the credit? But I, in the meanwhile, you're losing that contact with your kids and your family, which is actually important for our, you know, our social connections are one of the most important um, stress management uh, connections or, you know, um, right how do you see solutions? I mean, it's, it's right there at home. And then you, you know, when the more that you're away from it, mm-hmm. the less that you get cuddles from your kids and right. from your wife. Uh, right. Yeah, the less that, you know, that is a miss. And I, I'm seeing that I'm an osteopath, I'm a stress coach. Uh, so I'm working always with the body and I'm seeing that how touch is so important. Even, you know, even touch of a dog or, or a cat, you know, if that just lies on top of you, how much rest and 
and tranquility that can bring into you. And then, of course, when you're always working and you're most here in Belgium and in Europe, you know, where people that work 10, 10 hours a day or more, you know, less and less contact, physical contact with people, uh, it, it is creating a sort of, a, you know, a, 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 a miss within the body and which creates a stressor. And as you say, you know, that digestive system, because stress has an impact on shutting down your, your digestion. And if you do that for too long time, of course, you're going to get some serious uh, health risk on that level. Think about it. The last time you're in a stressful situation, I'm sure you felt a little uneasiness in your, in your stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I say, butterflies and, uh, you know, it starts gurgling, makes noise. That's it. That's acid. it. Acid. Yeah. Release more acids and the acids are eating away at your linings and whatnot. Listen, <laughs> there's no good thing about stress. Nothing good about it. Nothing good about stress at all. The only good thing about stress is to be able to learn what stresses you out and how not to be put in the situation that you're stressed out again. Listen, there's people going to their jobs every day. It's a, a stressful environment. I work in a stressful environment. These people think they're, cure, they think they're curing cancer, okay? They're not. They're making movies. It's fantasy. But for them, it's the most important thing in the world. You know, I, I look at them sometimes and I go, oh my gosh, can you people just slow down? Take it easy. It's going to get made. It always does. You know, I want to get up on a soapbox and say, will you people just calm down? The movie's going to get made. It's going to happen. There's no problems, you know. They run around like deer in headlights. They, they look crazy. And I see it every day. And a lot of times I laugh to myself because I'm like, you're all stressed off for no reason whatsoever. You know? You have you know? to follow sort of a rhythm that is put on put on to you also, I suppose. When in your in when you're an actor, you have to yeah, you have to follow somebody, the director or whoever is doing, you know, uh say telling you what to do. They're probably also very stressed and leading a lot of different people at the same time and so i can imagine i can imagine that for you know that it's not an easy task at all to stay oneself in a zen mode within an environment that is very stressed absolutely you know and stress is um it's one of those scepters that it's it, it, it's contagious if somebody's stressed out in your circle it's going to eventually affect you. You're going to become stressed out. So then you decided that after your experience, you ended up in hospital. You had this kind of insight and insight is, and you, when did you decide then to make the film, you know, to, to spread the world, world, word about stress? Well, my colleague, Folke Barson from, uh, he's from the Netherlands. He, um, I had told him about the idea of making the movie. <laughs> it was funny too, because he said, do you have a script? I said, no, there's no script. Mm -hmm. said, how, how do we make a movie without a script? I said, you're gonna follow my lead. Mm -hmm. I said, I have it in my head. I know what I want to make it about. I said, I can't really explain it. I said, I think I just wanna go out and shoot some footage and I will put it together. You know, and then eventually I created the arc, which is, you know, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Mm -hmm. I felt that the movie shouldn't be too heavy. I kind of, I guess you see it, I put some comedy in there. Yes, you did. And I think the comedy is good because it's subtle. Mm -hmm. And it also shows how stupid we are. <laughs> you know, the things that we get upset about. I, I wanted to show the lightness of it. You know, and then people saying, well, try yoga. Because... I love I that scene. I love that scene with the yoga. <laughs> you know, I'm not poking fun at it. I don't want people that saw the film and go, oh, you make a foot of yoga. No, 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 no. What it is, is you're taking somebody like me and throwing him in a yoga studio who's never done it and knowing how silly it is. I'm sorry, I'm having a yoga I just had the image in my head. 
Yeah, it's hilarious. It's, yeah, it is. It is. You know, or yeah. Tai Chi. You know, yeah, the Tai Chi. Yeah. Yeah, go into the park and and go start hanging. And we actually went to a park in Chinatown, and I just meddled my way in. Folk who was behind the camera, he was laughing. You know, he. I don't know if you can hear it in the take. Probably not. He probably took it no, out. No, you can't. Cracking up um, in the background because it was hilarious. You know. Yeah. But also what I learned from, from the different scenes that you put in front of us, uh, thanks to your barber, uh, that, uh, uh, that you know, so all, you know, there's a lot of people around us that give us good advice, yeah, or from their hearts, you know, try this and try that. They, and of they course, mean well. and they mean well. But yeah, I, what you're showing is like, you have to find your own, tool that suits you try these things yes if it doesn't work it doesn't mean it's not good but exactly. it does it does mean that you're not connecting with it it's not for you so you have to find something else and don't stop don't stop with the first thing no go to the next thing if somebody gives you advice try it uh, until you start to assimilate a little bit from you know how do i get my system down what are the triggers to help me to lower my heart rate, my breath rate, and so forth. And maybe you're not ready today, but maybe you're ready later for some things. When you're in your really stressed period, you're not really ready for that Tai Chi. But maybe when you're already in your recovery period, afterwards you might be uh, helping, you know, might be finding that Qigong or Tai Chi indeed is something you like. But if you're in a really stressed moment, I'm saying that, if you're really stressed for a long time, don't start with meditation, because if your system is so overwhelmed and in action, you know, basically your system thinks there is a lion chasing me. Now, are you going to sit down under the Bodhi tree and say, ah, whom? Your system is, it goes completely bonkers with that. It's an additional stressors. No, once your body is a little bit more calm, and your, you know, your system from the biological part of point of view is a little bit again into regulated. Then start with meditation is much, you know, actually as a sort of you know, um, prevention, you know, or getting you to the next level or of your relaxation. Yeah, that is more normal. But within a stress, if you're already stressed and do meditation, I find that that is completely contradictory. I agree. Um, as you see, one of the things that I did was I, I started feeling like I can't help myself. Maybe I can help somebody else. And I you, you do an act of kindness. Mm -hmm. And you're surprised if you can make somebody else's day uh, a little better, yeah. what it does to you. And your general whole thing that you have going on that's negative i mean look you're having a bad day i'm not saying go out and find some poor helpless victim that you're going to help you know or help an old lady cross the street but yeah think about hey you know what i'm all right i'm having a really crappy day what can i do to make somebody else today brighter mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna be surprised how good it feels to have that somebody and get the twinkle in their eye and a little smile and say, thank you very much. It was very kind to you. You know, I, I do it a lot. I'm in a soup, supermarket or in, uh, in a parking lot and I see somebody's got heavy boxes and I just go walk over and I help put it in their car. And they're like, wow, man, thank you. That was cool. And I'm like, hey, man, we all need to do this. You know, it's called paying it forward. One person does it, it becomes contagious and everybody does it. The world that we live in now is horrific. It's angry, it's sad, it's very uh, volatile. Um, you know, I don't have to tell you. You know, a lot of people feel it's uh, the end of days. Um, who's making it the end of days? We are. We are. As a, as, a, as a populace, we are making it end of days. And we, we are also the ones that can change it because we are... Yeah. And like I always say, we are an individual and we are society. If you want to see a change in society, well, you are society, so you have you are 
you know, we have to start changing it. And it's again, coming back to a theme of, of the film, the stress, which is, you know, it's your, it's the mindset, you know, is the way you look at um, the world is the way you look at life and things like that. It is a really uh, helpful into, yes, making that um, you know, change within you and doing the great things as you say, you know, yes, it's already scientifically proven as well that if you give to others or if you do things for other people, uh, you know, that, that really, you know, that it has an effect on you. Neurohormonally, people that do that live longer uh, and so forth. So it's a very good, you know, stress management, yeah. But of course, uh, when you're in that critical phase, it's maybe not the best thing to start with. Yeah. Because exactly. it's, but it's, you know, it's somewhere once you've realized, once you start working on yourself and once you start back into that balance and then you start doing it then just to keep you, you know, in, you know, keep balancing yourself of part of your stress management. We are very good on, on getting ourselves to the top of stress, but we are very bad into how to relax, recuperate and regenerate to taking the time for that. Mm -hmm. We're really very bad in organizing that aspect of our lives, but we need both of them. Stress is also very good for, for example, when there is a car in the middle of the street, you need stress to, you know, to jump. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But of course, ongoing stress, chronic stress so that for, for nothing, as you mm -hmm. say, you know, for, because you, you know, you press that snooze button three times this morning. Or you, you have this huge credit for that big Mercedes that you don't need or another type of car. Maybe you could have done with less. Yeah, that, that's, that sets up at the end of the day. So I really, really love, yeah, indeed, how your film portrayed all of this and also uh, portrayed how you got over it uh, in, in a way of looking at some other people with you know with experience more disastrous than your your own um and also now we can you're in the film you we see this uh the, the hurricanes that wipe out complete villages that you went to see and you know uh, went to talk to people and find inspiration from them from them who lost everything who lost uh you know and 14 year old lost her father and her brother i believe yeah that was a tornado uh, and, yeah and it was a tornado it's like wow and then i'm thinking at this moment of all these people in the caribbean and in in miami and and, and cuba and and so forth you know that you know what must they feel also and the stress levels there that is yeah it, be, it really it, touched upon me it when i watched it well right now if i wanted to mm -hmm. but, uh, I, you know, again, it just, it makes me think back to when we shot it. The, mm -hmm. the world is always going to be full of tragedy. Um, I think it's how our reaction to the tragedies, how we react to the tragedies is what's going to be the difference going forward. You know, yeah. again, we, we all need to help. Um, it seems like the whole world wants to always keep us separated. And I feel that sometimes it comes from the governments because they don't want us to be on the same page because then we become too powerful. You know, uh, we're dictated to a lot about how our lives are supposed to go. And I think we have to turn it around. I think we have to, we have to be the ones to say, no, 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 we'll do it my way, not your way. You know, we'll do it the way I feel that I am going to get the most out of it with the least amount of stress. I think that that's the way to think is, you know, I take a lot of time now. If I'm in a situation where it's become stressful, it's become a situation that I see is going to be stressful. I mean, sometimes I know I, I'm leaving the door, you know, and I know what's ahead of me on the other side of the door. Um, and I say to myself, well, all right, how am I going to tackle this today? You know, what am I going to do different today than I would have done yesterday? Mm -hmm. 
Um, the thought process is so important uh, when dealing with stressful situation environment. You know, again, a lot of it is based, I see most of the stress in today's society is based on finances or your work environment. Mm -hmm. um, let alone this other stuff, political environment, the world matters, uh, the, the uh, global warming. <laughs> what are we going to do about it? You know, I mean, yeah, you're upset. I get it. People are upset about it. But then it's up to us to change. Yeah. You know, we have to make the change. You know, maybe not drive your car in so much. Maybe take a bike. I can't because I live so far from the city. If I started my bike, <laughs> I'd have to leave the day before to get to, to work. So, you know. Okay. Yeah, no. No, you have to use the best way to get to the place in the best proper time. So um, Stress Awareness Day, the topic is speak up and speak out about stress. Uh, the film Distressed, I've put a link on the website so everybody can watch that. It will be available on uh, realhouse.org. But do you have to end this uh, conversation with you? Would it, it's like a one phrase that you would like to give to the audience and say from, you know, this is, this is my message, to, you know, about you know, stress management, or, or, you know, how you see to make uh, things better for all of us as regards to stress? Sure. Well, I think the idea of paying it forward is a brilliant mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Do one thing every day, set out to do one thing, one good thing every day, and try and make that message continue to other people. Um, it's a you beautiful know, you message. Public speaker, it's a good thing to put out there. Um, yes. You know, just be, be more human. In a world that seems so unhuman and inhumane, it's the time for us to step up and make it more human. That's number one. Yeah. And stress is how you handle it. I said it over and over again. You know, yeah. it, it seemed like when I made the movie and at the end, everybody's looking for this golden message. Wow, what did he find? The Messiah? No, no. I did some thinking. I, I slowed it down. I took it in. I gained knowledge, and I said, stress is pretty much man-made. Yes. It really is. If you think about the situations, I'd say 85% of the time, the stressful environment that you're in, you created. You did it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, either you went to the casino and you spent the money you shouldn't have, you did it. Nobody told you to do it. <laughs> You did it. Uh, yeah. mm. You got a lot of stress <laughs> and a lot oh, of angry yeah, people yeah. around you. Yeah. And you went to the pub and you got drunk and you got in your car and you smashed your car and you caused damage and you wound up in jail. You created it. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things that we do to ourselves most of the time. Think and I like that. You know, I like that you say that indeed it's about us and it's us to change. And also like this technological, uh, you know, exponential uh, rate of growth that we are experiencing at the moment. This is really the time to step down a little bit and reflect on what it means to be human, uh, what, it, what our values are indeed about these things. What am I still contributing to society, to the community? I have a you know, uh, a friend who is actually every day, every day, and he doesn't miss a day, he goes outside somewhere and goes and clean up the road. You know, like, you know, everything, all the trash, you know, he will pick it up and, you know, puts it in the bag. And he's created like communities um, wherever he goes, even in areas uh, which are, you know, with a lot of migration and so mm -hmm. forth. And if and these people are saying, what are you doing? You know, and we know that our, our environment, you know, our, our street is dirty and say, so, well, let's clean it up together. And then it gets them activated and then they start doing it themselves. And also these kind of gestures for community, for other people, I thought, you know, it is really for me when I, when I saw that, listened to him also, you know, I said from this is a great stress, 
you know, stress it's management, you know, is. as you're saying. But you feel good about yourself. Yeah. You know, you leave there with a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. And when you feel accomplished, that takes away a lot, a lot of stress in your life because you have done something good. You've done something positive, not negative. You know, I, I feel too, when you dwell in the negative, it just continues to stay negative. Mm -hmm. You want to turn the situation around, having a bad day, bad week, bad month, bad year, that's up to you mm -hmm. to turn it around. But I know that if you sit there and you, you do the, oh, why me, poor, poor, pitiful me, it's never going to get better. Mm -hmm. that, that never works. You know, uh, okay. relying on other people's empathy and sympathy for you, they don't give a crap. They really don't. Um, you need to change for the better. You need to be the better person. You need to take the higher road. You need to do more for yourself um, as an individual. And then let, let karma take over after that. So I think it's a good way to end this conversation. It's taking that personal responsibility. Gary, I really thank you for this interview. I will put at the end uh, you know, the link to the de-stressed film and uh, really speak up and speak out about stress like you've done and you continue to do. Really, thank you for that. I think hey, it's, next really, time I it's also it's, an, it's a pay forward for you. That uh -huh. is for sure. So, next time uh, I come abroad, we're going to have a Belgian beer together, okay? Oh, uh, we do, we do. Well, actually, if it's in America, I, I wouldn't mind a Brooklyn beer. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And I, uh, well, success with the film and with the distributions further, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. Bye-bye.